What's up, guys? Eric here, and talk about dedication. <laughs> I'm actually recording this video on my Chromebook in a hotel room. Uh, literally no lights, no camera, no nothing. I am dedicated to get this story out for everybody. But this came across Twitter earlier, and I'm like, you know what? I need to do a video about this, so I'm going to jump on use StreamYard and try to pump out a video for you guys so we can talk about this. Uh, this is a pretty big deal. Uh, Mark Pedowitz exits as chairman and CEO of the CW as Nexstar acquisition closes. Now, this is pretty shocking. Mark Pedowitz has been the figurehead of the CW for as long as I can remember. And um, he had a lot to do with DC TV and just the diversity, in, you know, equality, inclusivity, all of those things that kind of make the CW what it is now. So with him exiting, this is a pretty big deal for where the network is heading. And I'm going to give my thoughts on that in this video. Let's read through this article here. Uh, Mark Pedowitz is stepping down as chairman and CEO of the CW after 11 and a half years at the helm of the broadcast network, one of the longest tenures in network television. The move comes as local TV giant Nextstar Media Group is taking over the CW with its acquisition of 75% stake in the 16-year-old broadcast operation now completed. He'll be replaced by Dennis Miller, who was named president, confirming new owners' intentions to take the CW in a different direction. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about Dennis Miller. We will talk more about that in another video. Um, but the fact that Mark Pedowitz is going to be leaving uh, is a pretty big deal uh, in terms of like showing that they are moving away from everything that made the CW the CW. It goes here, uh, Pedowitz's exit is effective immediately, and the respected veteran TV executive will be reviving his Pine Street Entertainment Company, which he was producing for under a deal at Warner Brothers TV, when in the spring of 2011, he was appointed president of the CW. So he's going to go back to doing what he was doing before, which um, is good. I mean, he'll be able to still put out uh, content that he feels uh, passionate about and that he feels strongly about, so that's really good. Because Nextstar signaled potential changes at the time of the August 15th acquisition announcement when its topper said the CW would be shifting towards broader and cheaper programming, including acquired off-network shows with the goal to make the network profitable by 2025. I want to remind everyone that that is not negative. The CW was never a for-profit network. It was literally a launching pad for its parent companies, and it was never intended to turn a profit. That has changed now because Nextstar is looking to make money from the network network, uh, which is why they acquired the debt that was left over, and that was the purchase price for the network. Just want to throw that out there before we continue. Those statements reportedly blindsided the CW leadership. Still, Nextstar also made a point of announcing at the time that Pedowitz would remain chairman and CEO, projecting a sense of stability, at least in the short term. Yes, a lot of people thought that was good news, especially for a lot of the content that we're still getting right now. Now, Pedowitz's exit marks the beginning of the end of the CW as we know it, a full-fledged broadcast network built on original scripted series with observers expecting uh, it to eventually resemble outlets like My Network TV or PAX. Other CW exec executive departures and layoffs are likely as the new owners start to implement their plans. I, I don't expect this is the end. I think we're going to see more of this. Uh, Pedowitz, who succeeded the CW's first programming president, Don Ostroff, focused on broadening the network's audience, bringing in more older and male viewers and ramping up the CW's diversity. And diversity and inclusive, I can't even speak now. Diversity and inclusive, inclusive, why can't I say this? Inclusion, there we go, because I can't edit, efforts. While navigating the network's complicated ownership structure as a 50-50 Warner Brothers CBS venture, the two companies will each retain a 12.5% stake going forward. Yeah, okay. Um, a self-professed big Supernatural fan, Pedowitz got behind the series once he joined the CW as president and used it as a cornerstone of his rebuilding strategy. Supernatural star Jared Padalecki recalled how Pedowitz told him and his co-star Jensen Ackles from the start how much he loved the show. We really didn't know how serious he was about it, but even early on, he was very clear that he cared about us as people. Padalecki said how the executive treated the talent on CW shows. He would praise this or that scene. He knew one of us had gotten a cold the prior week. He just had a baby months prior. He always put people first, so no matter what, uh, we all felt like he cared about us. And I can guarantee you that's not going to be the case with Next Star. I, I, I just don't see that being the case. Uh, soon after he started, Pedowitz launching a string of DC series, including Arrow, The Flash, Supergirl, Legends of Tomorrow, and continue to add hits like Riverdale and All-American. All of them come from Berlanti Productions, which hit its stride and became a top CW supplier during Pedowitz's tenure. 
Uh, Berlanti's relationship with Pedowitz dates back to the time Pedowitz was president of the then ABC studios, where Berlanti had an overall deal and executive produced the ABC drama series Brothers and Sisters. Berlanti was one of the first writer producers Pedowitz called when he took the CW job, and it led to the breakout hit Arrow, which launched the network's DC universe as well as Riverdale and All American, neither of which popped in their first seasons, but Pedowitz stuck with them until they did because he believes in passion and art and creativity. And that's something that's uh, in very short supply in, in today's world. Uh, he was the right person uh, in the right job at the right time. Berlanti said uh, Pedowitz, he found so many ways to make the network viable and to keep other shows that people would have canceled six episodes on the air um, for six years, sometimes gave them time to find and build an audience. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. 100%. He did give people time to make content that he felt strongly about. Pedowitz joined the CW as president in 2011 amid rampant speculation that the money losing network may shut down. I think his track record speaks for itself, Berlanti said. Everybody predicted the death of that network from the time we started when we were working on Arrow. Everybody was saying it was going to be gone in a few years, and it took look at all the things that survived. There's a whole generation of young people who have been shaped by the stories they supported, telling the storytellers he supported. Whoever comes in next, they can learn a lot from his methodologies and the kind of leader that he's been. Uh, Berlanti heard from Pedowitz's ex exit from him, just like he did when he took the job. The executive called the key talent and producers to deliver the news. I'm definitely a little shocked and a little sad, uh, Berlanti said, but Mark and I have worked together for 20 years at ABC and here, and I'm sure we'll continue to find other ways to work together. I'm pretty sure they will. I'm not too concerned about that. Um, it's more about what's going to happen to the network. I think Mark Pedowitz is going to be just fine. Uh, Pedowitz exit comes as the fall CW lineup had uh, put together. It's starting to roll out. It includes a recent at Walker and its prequel, Walker Independence, both executively produced by Pat Alecki, who also stars in Walker. Pat Alecki recalled how Pedowitz lured him back into acting when he was contemplating retirement by accommodating him and his family with a Texas shoot and, and encouraged him to produce. This would have never happened if it weren't for Mark Pedowitz, Pat Alecki said. Uh, Pedowitz's exit comes to the tail end of 2022 buying season when the networks book scripted series in development for next fall. As Deadline reported, the CMP Brass recently reached out to the creative community to lay out their strategies, which, in addition to the network's signature genre shows and teen soaps, includes procedurals and other older skewing dramas, as well as half-hour comedies, including multi-camera sitcoms. So that's a very drastic change. This is part of why I'm concerned about DC TV, what's going to happen with Stargirl, what's going to happen with Superman and Lois. It seems like they have a style that they're going for, and it doesn't look like those type of shows are going to fit into that uh, that umbrella of stuff. But we'll have to wait and see. Under Pedowitz, it was promoted to chairman and CEO in 2022. The CW ramped up the volume of original programming, doubling the amount he inherited and expanding to Sunday and Saturday, as well as the summer. Though a mix of original scripted series, international acquisitions, and unscripted series and specials, he only scaled back on original scripted series this upfront ahead of the next star acquisition, which we saw a lot of shows being gone, particularly shows that we were kind of excited to see what they were going to do in like Batgirl or uh, Batwoman and um, Legends of Tomorrow. Batgirl. Everything Bat-related gets canceled, it seems. Uh, Pedowitz, a lawyer by trade known for his matter-of-fact style, also helped set a digital social strategy for the network, which became an early adopter of AVOD, uh, making his program available through the CW app on the digital platforms, preferred by its target younger viewers, while also protecting its ad dollars by putting its shows online with a full commercial load. Which, by the way, the fact that they've acknowledged their younger viewers just makes that whole older viewing thing that they tried to tell us a few months ago, seemed even more ridiculous. He secured full in-season stacking rights to all the CW scripted series and, and also oversaw the launch of the CW's digital channel, CW Seed, which, uh, with acquired and short-form original programming. On the DEI front, the most recent 21-22 season, approximately two-thirds of the showrunners, writers, and directors working on networks' original scripted series were women and or people of color, while nearly 50% of the series regulars were women and 57% were people of color. For 21-22, GLAD's Where We Are on TV report was representation and inclusion cited the CW as the broadcast network with the highest percentage of LGBTQ series regulars for a fifth year in a row. And I can guarantee next season... That will not be the case. They have canceled almost everything that is uh, diverse on the network. I can't think of anything off the top of my head that's continuing that has diversity in it. In any of, like, all the shows and all of the content that did that, I think they're gone from the CW. 
Additionally, under Padowitz, the CW broke into the award circle with Golden Globe wins for network comedy series Jane the Virgin and Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Amid the uncertainty surrounding the future of the CW, the network's May up front presentation felt like a farewell, with Pedowitz taking a final bow at the end, surrounded by the network stars, including the two that were there for most of his run, Padalecki and Ackles. The choice of music opening also seemed like a bucket list item for Pedowitz. Instead of the usual flavor of the summer, the presentation featured icon Stevie Wonder. For the occasion, Wonder belted out superstition, changing the words to CW is the way. Following Pedowitz's exit, the question is what way that will be. So, yeah. Uh, very interesting here. I, I have to say when he decided to stay on, I felt a little bit more comfortable about what was happening uh, over at the CW. However, now I am very concerned, particularly for Stargirl. Superman and Lois does concern me, obviously, but Stargirl, I'm very concerned for Stargirl. I'm concerned for what's going to happen with that show because if Mark Pedowitz was the one who was sort of, you know, making all of this happen it makes me wonder like how concerned are the new owners going to be about um, anything related to any of these DC TV shows? Are they going to be there for us? Are they going to want to keep them on? Are they not going to, I mean, what, what does this mean for Gotham Knights, for Justice U, for any other future DC TV content on the CW? I think we should all be a little bit concerned. Um, so we'll follow up on this story uh, over the weekend on the after party. So make sure you tune in on Saturday to see if there's any updates to this, because I have to tell you, I am very, very worried about the future of DC TV now that Mark Pedowitz is gone. Uh, I'm going to look up some information on this Dennis Miller guy and see what I can find before the end of the week. And hopefully it's good stuff. I'm hoping it's good stuff. I didn't have it available now because I didn't have a chance to check it out beforehand, but I will look it up before the end of the week. All right, thanks for struggling with me through this unedited video that I had to do on my Chromebook on the road. Uh, hopefully, I'll be back home to uh, make some more polished content uh, <laughs> tomorrow this weekend. Anyway, thanks so much, guys, and I will catch you later. Have a great day.